Welcome to Thriving Tribes, man. My name is Corey, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. So right now it's about 20 past uh, 12 after midnight, and I just had my last call, and my dinner managed to do a podcast. They're completely busy, uh, absolutely crazy. And But even though I was busy, I did manage to get a workout in. And the difference now is that lately I've been seeing that I've got more energy, and it's a lot of a chunk of it is weird because when I hit the gym, I've been lifting heavier weights. And there's something, it's almost proof to what I've been saying because I, I, I was thinking about, you know, the paleo man and back in, the, uh, you know, back in the, closer to the Stone Age and how they survived. And even before Stone Age, as the paleo man would go days and days without eating, but at the same time, they would go through a whole lot of struggle in order to... Uh, to to feed their families and that meant having to also be in competition with other animals, other predators as well. And a lot of it was just a whole lot of hard work. So our bodies and minds were primed to do so. And as we progress in technology and the sort of things that uh, are required in order to get food and, and, and feed our families and keep our families safe, we don't have that same level of struggle that our body needs in order to thrive. So I find it when I'm doing hard, working harder at the gym, lifting heavier, uh, doing really difficult shit, <laughs> I find uh, everything a lot, a lot easier. My, my mind is open. I'm um, much happier as a person, and I've got bundles and bundles of energy. So there's something to learn about that, and I don't know what the lesson is, is of that, but I felt like the need to share that. And I think the last call, or the third last call, was quite interesting. I was speaking to one of one of uh, the guys in the Reignited Men program, and we were talking, he was away for a business trip, and as he came back, we started talking about a few things, but there's one thing in particular that I thought was quite interesting, and... I haven't spoken about in the podcast is that when you are within this place where you're in this journey where you're trying to change a sexless relationship to sexual success, there is a level of friction that you're bringing in the relationship. So whether it's through conversation, in fact, a lot of it will be through conversation. So there's this level of friction that you're bringing and it's not just the friction that you're bringing within the conversation, it's the discomfort that that friction brings when you have those conversations. So this that discomfort, and if she takes action on those, uh, on those uh, conversations that you're talking about, it's gonna require her to move in discomfort, because now she's moving from this place where she was prepared not to have sex to the point where she needs to have sex. So there's, it's almost like, a, and we started likening it to a sledgehammer. So, if we imagine you were this, this, the the goal of being in a, sex, a successful relationship was a, a some sort of germ that was within a very very strong rock, and you had a sledgehammer and you're trying to smash into it. Um, you. There's this impact that you're going, it's friction, it's quite difficult. You're having these difficult conversations, she has to be uncomfortable in order to start getting better within uh, the, the relationship and you're requiring a certain level of standards, which is completely out of her comfort zone. So there is this diff level of difficulty that you're bringing into the relationship, which if you continue on that vein, can start going against what you're doing. So we started talking about how do we put some balance to it? So as he was away, uh, I started pointing out the fact that you don't want, regardless of the interactions that you've had, you have to consider that, you know, she's been there with the children by, the, by herself. And then she's having to, uh, I mean, when you're at home, she never has to worry about what if a burglar, a, a burglar walks in, what if somebody breaks in the house? She never has to worry because she's got a husband there, but if the husband is not there, the level of comfort is gone. And she has to worry about the, her mental fatigue is probably 10 times worse. So it was more of a case of just having a stop and really telling her how much she appreciated of the hard work that she's done. And a part of it is that we, we allow the 
sexlessness and the frustration of being in a sexless relationship stop us from actually being polite, being gr uh, grateful, being showing some level of kindness. And I was talking, we're talking about this thing, you know, there has to be time when you just say, you know what, despite of all the other things that are going happening in our relationship, I actually appreciate the things that you're actually doing. That's right. And we started talking about investment that um, within the relationship, most spouses are putting the investment in the wrong place. It's kind of like they're putting investment into paper, like, you know, newspapers. Like right now, if you've got loads of money, you won the lottery, the worst investment would be to invest in newspapers. Like they're almost non-existent. They're dropping by 30% every single year. So nobody's going to be reading newspapers in the next five years. In fact, I don't even know, I don't even remember the last time I saw a newspaper, actually, now to think about it. But that would be a bad investment because that's something that's becoming extinct. Whereas, you know, if she took the investment, whatever investment she's doing, and I know some of your wives are invested in the children because they, they get fulfillment from being a good mom. They, they do a lot around the house to make it look amazing and the cooking and uh, being part of the uh, PTA and doing all these things in order to feel like they're a good mom or to appear to be somebody of stature within the community. Whatever they're doing, there's certain things that they're doing which is an investment and they're getting some validation from it. But you know if they shifted all that energy into the relationship, should get better long-term fulfillment within that relationship. So she just does, she's, she's, she's already invested in your relationship. She wants to be in a relationship, she wants to be married to you. In fact, I would argue and say she actually loves you, but she just doesn't know how to show it in a way that's collaborative and fulfilling for both of you. So it's, it's an incredible thing. And I was laughing earlier with, with the guy, and I, and I kind of felt bad because I, I didn't know whether he was finding it... Um, annoying that I was laughing at, about the situation, not his situation, but the fact that um, people can actually go through their life investing in the wrong thing, not knowing that if they just shifted a little bit, if they just pivoted a little bit and invested in the right place, they would actually get more fulfillment with life and much happier life. And it's crazy because you imagine all those people that have gone to their deathbed angry and resentful about life, but they're continuously, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, continued investing in the wrong thing, expecting a different outcome. Lucky for you guys, you listen to places like, you listen to podcasts, you, some of you guys are part of Reunited Men, you're beginning to shift that. And then I, I, I'm going to end this then. Uh, the reason for you, in, in order for you to get that fulfilling relationship that is collaborative, Yes, you're going to have moments where you're going to have those difficult conversations, where you're going to introduce a level of frustration within that relationship. And that's, that's to help her grow, by the way. You're doing this to help her grow, and it's meant to be collaborative. It's not meant for you just to change her in order for you to have sex. It's something that you're working together so you guys can be collaborative to going towards the path of being happy and fulfilled in the relationship and sex being the byproduct of that. And at the same time, while you're doing that, where you, where you introduce a level of friction and challenges within the relationship and doing so in order to grow, you, there has to be a part of you that is quite um, capable of giving compliments, being kind, being courteous, extending yeah, uh, kindness as well. And again, it's, I know it's difficult when you having to, you have to navigate being kind you have to navigate that through that sexual frustration, sexual frustration, and hopefully, guys, this has been something that you, you needed to hear, because and I was likening it to that you, the way you're building a relationship. While I use the analogy of the battering ram, you're trying to smash to get this treasure, and what you're actually doing right now, you have to consider if you are in pottery class, you have, you have to use both hands in order to shape to get to this. Uh, relationship that you want and if one hand is the one that's forcing it to grow and you're having to have these difficult conversations and bringing a level of uncomfort uh, bringing a level of discomfort in the relationship with one hand the other hand should be coupling that with gratitude and very a lot of kindness and being able to do that so you're using both sides that she's 
she's feeling gratitude. She, she's seeing that you're seeing her. You're validating her on the things that she feels are important to her. And when you do so, when you bring the battering ram, she's she's more success, 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 uh, <laughs> she's more willing to to uh, take in on board what you're about to say because she's not there's a balance to what you're doing because i think you can be unbalanced as in you're just pushing a lot of frustration and you know when you're doing the right thing in terms of adding the frustration the friction the the challenge within the relationship in order for you guys to grow it can start going against you because you're not balancing it with the the kindness and the gratitude and the appreciation. So hopefully that's something that you needed to hear. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. If you've got any question, go to thriving underscore tribesmen on our Instagram. And if you've got any question and you've got a question specifically for your relationship, go over there and write the, the question and I will speak about your relationship so that you can get some value from it. So thank you very much. I'll be seeing you guys soon. Take care.